Good evening and welcome to BTV News. I'm Sophie Dong in for Quinton Hall. And I'm Swati Ganesh. Last week, Vanderbilt University participated in resistance efforts to President Trump's recent executive order. The order temporarily halts entry of people from seven majority Muslim countries as well as refugees into the country. Chancellor Nicholas S. Zeppos joined other leaders, universities, and organizations to oppose the ban. Along with 48 other university leaders, Zeppo signed a letter insisting Trump retract the order. The letter said the ban, ban threatens both American higher education and the defining principles of our country. Two other letters to Trump were also signed on behalf of Vanderbilt last week. The letters follow Zeppo's recent message to the Vanderbilt community on protecting diversity. Longtime donors Robert and Diane Levi plan to donate $10 million to support Vanderbilt uh, to help with the scholarship fund, which helps provide need-based aid to undergraduates. The Levi's essentially laid the groundwork for what later came to be known as Opportunity Vanderbilt. Opportunity Vanderbilt refers to the university's initiative to meet 100% of students' financial need so they do not need to take a loan. The Levi's upcoming donation stems from their passion to help support and prioritize Vandy's diversity and inclusion initiatives. Robert Levi believes that in order to, quote, have a great institution, you want to include and offer opportunity to a wide spectrum of people who bring both academic strengths and diverse cultural perspectives. It is because of the support of, from donors like Robert and Diane Levi that Opportunity Vanderbilt has been so successful in meeting the financial needs of students. Vanderbilt University has a new podcast on the ground. Chancellor Nicholas Zeppos is starting a new podcast called The Zeppos Report. He will interview Vanderbilt faculty, students, staff, alumni, and others to talk about topics ranging from politics to pop culture. The first podcast features award-winning author, political science professor, vice provost of academic strategic affairs, and co-director of Vandy Polls, John Geert. Here's a clip from the first episode of the Zeppos Report. Well, hello everybody. This is Nick Zeppos. I'm the Chancellor of Vanderbilt University, and this is episode one of the Zeppos Report. And this is an unusual opportunity for Vanderbilt, for me, to really sit with the amazing people on our campus who focus on current events, trends in the world, and really share those insights with people who are thirsting for knowledge and opinion on where is our country going, where is our world going, where is the SEC going. We have a full range of topics. The podcast is currently available on SoundCloud, YouTube, Google Play, and the Zeppos Report website, and will be available on iTunes shortly. Twelve faculty members have been chosen for the 2017 Class of Chancellor Faculty Fellows. The program was launched three years ago to support outstanding, recently tenured faculty. Nominations for Chancellor Faculty Fellow candidates come from their deans. This year's group includes faculty members from nearly every department. The faculty members will hold a title for two fiscal years. Each faculty member will also be allocated $40,000 each year for those two years. The funding can be used for research, scholarship, and other activities that will continue to progress each person's career. The Chancellor Faculty Fellows will also meet frequently to discuss ideas and successful teaching methods. Vanderbilt brought its sexy back last Friday with the Commons Ball celebration. This year's theme was the 2020 experience, inspired by Justin Timberlake's album with the same name. Field reporter Claire Burnett brings us a story on how Vanderbilt students took back the night. This is Claire Barnett reporting for VTV News from Commons Ball. The Commons House presidents have assembled and planned a fun-filled evening full of food, dancing, and music. They transformed the Commons Center from a study space and dining hall into an elegant event venue. Students gained admission with a meal swipe and then began to explore the many fun activities scattered around the Commons Center. Attendees could have a caricature drawn of themselves, sing karaoke in Beasley's Western Room, sample one of the many delectable treats brought to the event, or even attempt to ride a mechanical bull. The ball truly was one of a kind, and for that reason, many students didn't know what to expect. I kind of expected to be a lot like prom, and like a combination of all the dances in high school. It's kind of similar, but not really. There's a lot more people. 
And many of those people expressed gratitude Friday night to the House presidents who made Commons Ball possible. So, uh, Commons Ball, I mean, it's been an awesome experience, you know. The school really does a lot for us, and, you know, it's credit to the, the presidents of the houses. I love my president. He does a great job making sure that uh, he's getting us all together. Great events, great food, great people, great atmosphere. The Hollywood theme's awesome. The 2020 experience, you know. Ultimately, the 2020 experience was a night to remember. Now back to the VTV studio. Thanks, Claire. As freshmen gathered at Commons to celebrate their first year, another group of students and faculty gathered in Buttrick Hall on January 26 to celebrate the new Center for Digital Humanities. It will be a space where faculty, postdoctoral, graduate, and undergraduate students use the digital world to facilitate humanistic innovation. The center will also provide the faculty and students a place to be introduced to digital humanities. The center received funding from the Provost's Office, the College of Arts and Science, and $1.5 million from the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation. History professor Helmut Smith will start her three-year term as the center's director next fall. You may be familiar with the show called The Biggest Loser. Well, the Vanderbilt Rec Center will offer the biggest winner program starting this month. Participants must have a BMI of 30 or above. The program will consist of weekly group training sessions and nutrition and mind-body workshops under the guidance of trainers and specialists. The program costs $85, and the registration for the program is open until February 20th. Now for this week's sports news, here's VTV News sports correspondent Madison Foglio. Good evening, Vanderbilt. I'm Madison Foglio here with your weekly VU sports update. This Saturday marks the highly anticipated season opener for the Vanderbilt women's lacrosse team. Head coach Kathy Sweezy is entering into her 20th season here at Vanderbilt. The Commodores will host Kennesaw State Owls this Saturday at February 11th at 1 p.m. Central Time. The first 250 fans will receive a free Nike long sleeve t-shirt. Trust me, Doris, that's something you will not want to miss. Moving on to men's golf. Vanderbilt is thrilled to announce that two players, senior Matthias Schwab and sophomore Patrick Martin, have been named to the 2017 Ben Hogan Award Watch List, an award given to the top men's NCAA golfer, taking into account all collegiate and amateur competitions during the past 12-month period. This is the second time that Schwab has been made an appearance on this list, and this is the first time for Martin. Vanderbilt is one of seven schools with more than one nominee. The golf team's next match will be on the road in Houston, Texas, February 17th for the All-American Intercollegiate Tournament. We wish you the best of luck, boys. The men's basketball team returned home yesterday from their on-the-road win against, the Arca against Arkansas Haas, 72-59. to One of the starting five, Matthew Fisher Davis, was not able to attend the game, according to head coach Bryce Dewar. But that didn't stop the Commodores as senior Nolan Kressler led the starting five with double digits, having 13 points to preserve the victory. The Commodores will be back in action at Missouri this Saturday. At Tip-off is expected to begin at 2.30 p.m. The women's basketball game is on the, the women's basketball team is on the road this weekend, Thursday, February 9th, as they get ready to take on Mississippi State in Starkville, Mississippi. The game will be aired on the SEC Network starting at 7.30 p.m. Central Time, with tip-off expecting to start at 8 p.m. We wish you ladies the best of luck. Now, starting next week, we will be honoring one Vanderbilt athlete to be awarded the VTV Athlete of the Week. This honor will include them as a feature on VTV, along with me wearing their jersey for the entire entirety of the show. Stop by next week to see who will become the first ever VTV Athlete of the Week. That's all we have for sports. For more information on live updates, scores, and stats, please visit VUCommodores.com. For VTV News, I'm Madison Foglio. Thanks, Madison. Now for this week's weather, here's a VTV News weather correspondent, John Horzen. Hello Vanderbilt! I'm John Horzen and this is your 7 day forecast. Getting right into things, Friday is going to be nice and sunny, highs in the 60s. Enjoy it because that's the last time you're going to see the sun for a while. Scattered showers all through the weekend. Saturday high of 66, low of 63. Sunday is a bit warmer, high of 70, low of 42 and those showers continue well into the coming week. Monday is going to be relatively dry in the morning but will continually rain as the day goes on. High of 57, low of 44. 
Tuesday will be pouring for the duration, high of 54, low of 40. Wednesday will be comparatively sunny with highs reaching the mid 50s and Thursday will be nothing but clear skies, high of 55, low of 37. For VTV News, I'm John Horson. That's all for tonight's broadcast. Thanks for watching VTV News. I'm Sophie Jong. And I'm Swathi Ganesh. Tune in next week for more top stories. Mm -hmm.